Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 1.3, Properties. Please pause to write the lesson number and title in your notebook. Today's objective is to use properties of operations to solve problems. Please pause again to write the objective in your notebook. Today's lesson has one vocabulary word. The vocabulary word is the distributive property. And the definition of the distributive property is down below. It says, multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each addend by the number and then adding the products. And there's an example here. So it shows five times, and then in parentheses, seven plus nine equals five times seven plus five times nine. And you can kind of think like you distribute papers means to pass something out. So you're passing the five out to both parts that you're adding together. So the five is gonna jump onto the seven and it's gonna jump onto the nine. So then we get five and seven and five and nine. Please pause to write the vocabulary word and the definition in your notebook. This lesson is on the properties of addition and multiplication in math. In addition to the distributive property, we also have some other properties that should be review for you. You should have heard these before. I'm gonna pass these out to you to put in your notebook, but I want you to follow along and make notes as I describe them to you. The first one we're gonna talk about is the commutative property. The commutative property means that we can change the order of the add-ends. It means that I can add 12 plus seven and I get the same thing as seven plus 12. So what I did is I moved them around. So I'm gonna connect my little arrows because what I did is I just flip-flopped them. When I think of the moving part, I think of the word commute, like you're going to commute to school. So I'm gonna draw a little car because I'm gonna commute to school. Okay, my next thing is the associative property. The associative property the associative property has to do with the grouping symbols. So associative is like who you hang out with, like your business associates. And it has to do with the way we group numbers. So in our example, we have five plus eight in parentheses plus 14. And if I look on the other side of the equal sign, I have five plus eight plus 14. But before my parentheses were around the eight and the 14, and now my parentheses are around the five and the eight. So the order stayed the same, but my grouping symbols moved. So that's my business associates. And you can think that of like people holding hands, right? So if you're holding hands, that's your friends, it's your associates. Our next one is the identity property. The identity property is a super easy one and it just says that any sum added to zero means it's gonna stay the same. So 13 plus zero equals 13. 14 plus zero equals 14. Doesn't matter, no matter where I add zero, in front and back, in a grouping symbol, it's not gonna change my add ends. All right, our next one down below are properties of multiplication. Multiplication and addition can be similar, but sometimes they have different rules, and a property is like a rule. So we also have the commutative property of multiplication. So remember, we had the commutative property of addition. Now we have the commutative property of multiplication. But it's the same rule. It says that the order doesn't matter. So instead of multiplying 4 times 9, I can multiply 9 times 4. I flipped my two multiples, but my answer stays the same. The associative property also of addition and multiplication is the same thing. It means that I can change my grouping symbols without changing my answer. So I started off with 11 times, in parentheses, 3 plus 6. And now I have, in parentheses, 11 times 3 times 6. So I still see an 11 and then an 11 a three and then a three and then a six and a six. So that all stayed the same, but what changed is where my parentheses were. They started off over here and then they moved over there. 
And then we also have an identi identity property of multiplication. But the identity property of multiplication says that anytime I multiply by the number one, then I'm gonna get the same number. So you can think your identity is like who you are, right? So I'll put a little smiley face for the identity property. It's who you are. So four times one is four. Five times one is five. Doesn't matter what you multiply, as long as you multiply it by one, it's going to stay the same because that's his identity. Now that we know all these properties, let's use them to solve some math problems. Remember that when we do this part of our flipped lesson, you should have your math book pages in front of you and be reading along the unlock the problem and writing any notes that I write down. The unlock the problem says, the table shows the number of bones in several parts of the human body. What is the total number of bones in the ribs, the skull, and the spine? Since they gave it to me in a word problem, I'm gonna underline the problem. What is the total number of bones in the ribs, the skull, and the spine? Total tells me an important word. It tells me that I'm going to be adding. So I know before I've even gotten any further that I'm going to have to add the ribs, the skull, and the spine. Let's keep reading. To find the sum of add-ins using mental math, you can use the commutative property and the associative property. All right, commutative means I can drive them around, I can change their place, and associative property means that I can change the grouping symbols of if I want to add something first or second. So they've gone ahead and taken the information from the table and moved it over here. So we're going to add 24 plus 28 plus 26. So 24 is the ribs. The skull is 28 and the spine is 26. And they've told us the number of ankle bones, but we don't need to know that. So let's continue on. So we have 24 plus 28 plus 26. And the first thing that I notice is if I have a four and a six, 24, sorry, my pen didn't work, 24 and 26, that six and four make an even number 10. So I wanna move them around so that when I add those together, I get a nice even number. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move 24 next to my 26. So now I'm gonna have 28 plus 24 plus 26. And if I move them around, that's the commutative property. Okay, now that I have them moved around, the next thing I can do is I can decide if I want to change my grouping symbols or if I need to add anything else. So in this case, we have added some grouping symbols. If you notice here, now we have these parentheses. So parentheses are like holding hands. They group numbers together. And when we group numbers together, that's the associative property. So we're gonna group 24 and 26 together because we said that six and four make the number 10. So when I add them together, I'll get the whole number. So six and four make 10, and then so I'm gonna add it to the side so you can see what I'm doing. 24 plus 26. Six and four make 10. So then I have two plus two plus the one I carried gives me 50. And now 50 is a nice, easy number to work with. So I have 28 plus 50. And I can do this in my head because, sorry, that should be a zero, 50. So now eight plus zero is eight, and five plus two is seven. So my answer is 78. So instead of having to line all three of these numbers up and add down the rows, I can do it in my head. And I now know that there are 78 bones in the ribs, the skull, and the spine. Great job, everyone. Remember that each fifth grade lesson has a lesson activity. Today's lesson activity has two parts. They are both about finding the sum of a number. So in number one, you're gonna add 31 plus 27 plus 29. Remember that you can move them around or group them however you need to. So I see that 31 and 29 one plus nine is 10, so I might wanna move those next to each other. 
Number two also says find the sum, and now I have four plus six, or sorry, four plus, and then in parentheses, six plus 21. And remember that parentheses tell me what to do first. So I need to start in the middle with the six plus 21 and then add the four on the outside. Remember that these two problems need to be completed in your math notebook. Your teacher will check for them when you see her next. Great job on your next flip lesson.